why don't we build like the Romans did? I'm going to answer this question and many more. My name is Tyler Lay, and I made this video for you because you, my audience, asked for it. I hope you like it, my concrete freaks. Roman structures. Talk about something that people are obsessed with. They talk about them all the time. How long-lasting they are, how awesome they are. Did you know the most liked picture on Instagram was a huge inspiration for our Roman structures? One form that they loved to use over and over again was the arch. Now, they did not design the arch, but some might say that they perfected it. Now, an arch... In two dimensions, I think we all know what the shape looks like. Kind of a half circle, or a parabola, or a catenary. All these are possible. But if I take an arch and I spin it, as in if I do another arch, and another arch, and another arch, and another arch, a whole bunch of them all together, all going around in a circle, what did I just make? A dome. Arches and domes are super tied. They're very, very similar to one another. And here's the Pantheon. And if we zoom in on the surface, we can see that they've made it with individual arches that go down, that all come together to make a dome. The longest spanning, unreinforced dome in the world. Let's go back to the arch, because it's simpler, it's two dimensions, we can use it to explain lots of different things that all apply to domes. Now the arch is pretty awesome, because once I start to load it, if I design it correctly, there's a load path that goes through it where it makes everything in compression. Compression, why is that so helpful? Why is that so awesome? Well, if I have only my member in compression for concrete, if there is no tension, then that means there are no cracks. That means I need no reinforcement. That means I have no concerns for corrosion. That means... I'm gonna have a long life structure. So what is wrong with us? Why in the world are we not using unreinforced arches all the time? There's good reasons for it. An egg is a great inspiration or a great way to think about an arch. And an egg, this egg happens to be the world record egg. 9.6 million likes. Congratulations, egg. You're awesome and we're gonna use you, brother. If you have an egg that's in pure compression, uh, 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 squeeze it, it's so hard to break it. You can't do it. Super high uniform loading, that egg is just like an arch. It actually has the sh same shape as an arch or a dome. And under uniform compression, eggs are strong and so are arches. And they knew this in Rome. And if you notice, they have an arch down here, but look at all the stone above it. See all of it coming down? All of this stone above it puts that arch in under uniform compression, under a uniform loading, and when that arch wants to deform, it keeps its shape. It keeps its shape. If an arch can keep its shape, it stays super strong. But if I load an egg at a certain point or non-uniformly, right? I know I can crack it, and an arch is the same way. If I start to load it non-uniformly, see it deformed, that dotted line is the deformed shape, erp, erp, jumped over like that, and why is that bad? That causes cracks. That causes tension. If you don't have reinforcement in it, that is bad for your concrete. That will cause cracks, and cracks equal failure. Game over. It's over. So if you have, you have a non-uniform load on your arch, it will fail. If you have a horizontal load on your arch, what causes that? Like an earthquake or a tornado or a high wind load or something else ramming into your arch at just one spot horizontally? That's not good and again, again causes cracking in an unreinforced arch and it'll fail. If you have heat on one side and not on the other, differential temperatures can cause your arch to move enough that it cracks and again it will fail or if you have settlement oh no your foundation isn't quite right and it starts to settle again your arch will move it will crack and it will be game over for that arch arches are extremely strong under uniform loading but they are weak 
under non-uniform loading. But there's some other things we have to watch out for. Underneath all this uniform loading, we get something called a springing force, these large vertical forces. I'm pushing down and my hands are shooting out to the side. And we have to design for these. One way to do it is to actually put a steel tie, but then your arch isn't unreinforced anymore. It's using steel. It's becoming reinforced and that's not allowed, or at least wasn't allowed in Roman times. But you could also anchor it into rock or build it into rock on both sides. So once it starts to push it out, the rock is strong and it will hold it. You can also have stacked arches where they all go together. Romans use this a ton. So all the forces, as long as they're uniformly loaded, would cancel each other out. That's possible. But what do you do at the end arch? Mm. So where can you possibly use an unreinforced arch? Well, any place where there's no earthquakes, no tornadoes, no hurricanes, as long as you build on rock, structures that have very, very high dead loads, very high uniform loads to hold them in place, and very low live loads to compare it to, or transient loads, point loads moving over the system, that's where it can happen. So not everywhere, only in very, very certain circumstances. But are there other reasons not to use arches? Well, the formwork for an arch can be extremely complicated and expensive. Here's an example of uh, something that looks like they're building an entire structure out of wood just so they can build a structure out of concrete and then take the structure down out of wood. Here's a more modern one where they're using steel, right? Again, this massive, massive structure they're building out of steel just so that they can cast this concrete arch. So what about reinforced concrete arches now? These are ones that actually have reinforcing steel inside of them. Are they used today? Sure, all the time, especially when you can precast them. You can precast them in a factory, take them out on a truck, lift them into place so you're not going to have that expensive formwork put them in place you can anchor them they're amazing especially you can see here where we have all of this soil around them holding them in place right uniformly loading them so when someone drives over the top of it like this you can see roadways going over it but those vehicle point loads aren't massive on top of that arch because again the soil is all around it then yes, that is a great application for a reinforced concrete arch. Domes, also, we use a lot of domes for our sporting events and our, our sporting centers. Um, also, people make their houses out of these domes, pretty awesome, and here's an entire neighborhood made out of concrete domes, pretty cool, right? So in summary, unreinforced arches and domes, they are awesome and can create long-lasting structures, but to use them, everything has to be right. The circumstances has to be just right. But if you can, you can make long-lasting structures. And that's one reason why these structures are not everywhere. These long-lasting Roman structures are in very limited environments, very, very limited environments. And the Romans knew this. They couldn't use these everywhere. But reinforced arches and domes, they are a modern, amazing piece of structural engineering. They can be used in a variety of applications and they are extremely efficient structures and people do use them today. So if you wanna follow me and see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis, you can check me out on Instagram at concrete.tyler. I hope you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment about other videos that you would love to see me make. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Bye. One easy way to find my videos is to go to my YouTube channel, click on the little icon over here, and type in whatever term you want. And I probably have a video about it. If I don't, I want to know. Please send me a comment and let me know about that.